Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Weyerbacher. This is their IPA. Uh, he sent me two of these. Huh? <laughs> uh, I have reviewed some of their beers a long time ago and their Mad Hatter series was pretty tasty. They did a bunch of different versions of them. But I haven't reviewed anything from them, and he sent me a bunch of different Weyerbacher beers, and their anniversary beer, Rico did, and, uh, and I've got a bunch in the refrigerator, so we're going to get to them. Uh, a lot of them are bigger beers, uh, but this is their IPA. I consider them a, kind of a transitional beer company five or six years ago when I first started drinking craft beer, and uh, they've... Uh, Seem like they've stepped up to the plate and uh, that are dating their bottles now and, and making some pretty tasty beers from what I've read. So, this is their IPA number one is what they're calling it. Uh, this one was bottled on July. And it's written in blue here. Real bright, bright blue. Real easy to see with the beer in there. Package 070116. Very easy to read. Uh, I love that blue writing. I mean, it's not like that faint yellow, faint white or black writing. It's, it's almost impossible to do. This, this bright blue writing is very easy to read. So, and I'm reviewing this on the 27th of July. So it's not even a month old. So, you know, a little more than three weeks. July 1st and this is the 27th. So, uh, about three weeks. About three weeks old. So we're going to review this and then see where this one ends up. It is so new that Rate Beer and Beer Advocate, either one, have a score on it. So I am on my own on this one. So Rico, thanks again, my brother, for all the wonderful beers you do send me. Uh, I want to keep this thing open and get it into the glass while I flap my gums. Uh, five and a half percenter on this beer, guys. I don't think I have the IBUs listed here. I do not. I don't think it's on the label. I'm getting a little bit of hops from this distance. That's very impressive. And these guys out of Eastern Pennsylvania. And uh, that's the neck of the woods up there where Rico is at. So probably very easy for him to get. And they do come to Virginia. Uh, like I said, it's, I've gotten so many wonderful beer mail packages from uh, both Brandon's and Jeff and Rico over the last couple of months. I haven't, I've been going and buying go-to beers, but I haven't been going and buying any review beers because with all the ones that's been sent to me, it, I'd be crazy just to go buy beers I can't even get in the damn refrigerator right now. I'd, be, I'd have to buy some Imperial Stouts or something like that if I could stick in the closet because I can't get them in the fridge. So, Over to the light, a nice tangerine color. It's a little bit on the lighter side. It's not a deep amber. It's a, a little bit closer to a, a golden color. So, uh, food pairings for this beer is going to be your typical IPA food pairings, guys. Cuisines, curried in the Thai. The cheese is a peppery, moderated pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar. Uh, your stronger cheese is Gorgonzola Limburger. And the meat for this is poultry fish, shellfish, and salmon. I'm going to add real meat to that. And the glassware is this typical pint, becker, nonic, tumbler, mug, stein, sidel. I'm using my favorite glass, a sobbing beer glass today. And it's an IPA. Not recommended for percent of cellar rings. Let's get it on. Slight hints of pine and some grapefruit. Uh, 
little bit of pineapple in there, a nice floral, herbal, hot presence too. Not a big West Coast style, but it's got a nice hot presence to it. It really does. A nice bold East Coast style. Uh, smells good. Smells really good. Very impressive smell to it. Well, let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. A slight dankness to it. Very light, very easy drinking. Wish I had the IBUs over here. It doesn't taste super bitter. I am getting a nice balance on this beer. Like I said, it's not to your West Coast style where the hops are just all up in your face and everything like that, but it's fairly tasty. I don't think it's outstanding or world class, but it seems like a decent beer. It seems like, uh, and I don't think it's a pricey beer. I looked at my notes that he sent me and I didn't see it listed there, so uh, I don't think this is an expensive beer for to buy a six pack of this, especially to be in a five and a half percenter. So. Well, let me take it back and let her have a sip two or three and uh, sip on it for a little bit and we'll come back and see what this one ends up, guys. Uh, kind of impressive. Alright, guys, I'm back. I'm sipping on about yeah, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Uh, very tasty. I mean, a very nice, easy drinking IPA. Very much, uh, in my opinion, in the East Coast style. Uh, nice floral, herbal hops. A little bit of pineiness and grapefruit and pineapple in there, but not overwhelming or anything like that. The biggest aspect is they got the date on the bottle when it was packaged in bright blue ink. Uh, thumbs up to those guys there for doing that. I think it's a very easy drinking IPA. Uh, for the season, craft beer IPA drinker, it's probably not going to blow your hair back or your socks off or anything, but for somebody that's wanting to get into that style, it's a nice example of that. A good transitional beer to me. Uh, it does, and being as fresh as this one is, uh, uh, a little over two weeks old, it's very nice, very enjoyable. So, Rico, thanks again, my brother. Let's do the final chug. Mm. Very nice. Very, very sessionable, if you will. Uh, the bitterness doesn't seem to be too heavy on it. I would say the, uh, the IBUs on this is probably 65 to 70 range. Uh, slight hints of some tropical fruit. It's not a big flavor monster though. It's uh, very easy drinking. So with that being said guys, uh, I'm going to give this a 7 which is a B plus. Uh, I do think it's, it's really close to being an A beer. Uh, a numeric rating on this guys would probably be 89. It is right at the door of being a, an A beer. Uh, and being a seasoned craft beer drinker and, and loving the IPAs and the double IPAs like I do, it doesn't have quite enough hop profile to me. And a lot of the breweries do that because they're trying to get the macro lager drinkers into something with a little more taste. And people that are drinking pale ale is going to try an IPA and, and, uh, and see how they like that. And, uh, and a lot of breweries do that. Uh, they don't produce these monster IPAs and uh, double IPAs that, that have the hops and the IBUs off the chain. Uh, they, they're trying to get these people into drinking something with a little more taste. So, very well done as far as that goes. So, uh, uh, a nice beer. It, it is a very enjoyable beer. Uh, like I said, guys, uh, I think they've come up uh, a notch two or, or ten since I started. Uh, doing uh, beer reviews and, and reviewed some of their beers four or five years ago. So, uh, very tasty. I enjoyed it. And like I told you earlier, Beer Advocate Rate Beer, neither one has any scores on it. So, it's definitely a fairly new beer that they put out. So, uh, if you have this one from them, this is their, uh, uh, they're calling this their IPA, but Rate Beer and Beer Advocate are calling it their uh, IPA number one. And I don't see that written on the label anywhere. But, uh, very nice. Very well done. If you've had this one from them, let me know what you think, guys. And 
Come on back tomorrow. Let's stick something tasty out of the fridge. See you then.